welcome to Adventures in Automation. I'm your host, Jen Rudd. Um, this is the JotForm Tables unboxing. Um, they announced about a week ago um, a table within JotForm. I noticed that they've been updating their um, interface on their submissions and just wanted to unbox it with you. I spent about three minutes beforehand just checking it out. And um, so we're here. Um, first off, I just wanted to make a mention that this is um, sponsored by Adept Interfaces. If you are looking to have custom solutions for automation, for structuring data in your business, and just creating a more efficient business, check out Adept Interfaces. Um, and if you have questions on any software, reach out to me. I'm here. You can comment. Um, and I hope that you enjoy this little unboxing. Okay. So first thing we want to look at is if you're in JotForm, this is my demo account. And so I wanted to look at um, the new tables functionality. So I'm going to go into my forms and click on my tables. And so um, I have a table with some submissions that I'm using, um, which is the caregiver application form. Um, in order to kind of compare and contrast, I did pull up my demo Airtable base just to show you kind of what I'm talking about um, and just some of the differences in how everything looks. Um, so you'll see Airtable is a little bit more robust. There's a lot going on um, and that's because there's a lot of automation and things happening behind the scenes. Um, in JotForm, I'm going to go ahead and view this table. And these tables are dynamically These tables are dynamically linked to your forms that you create in JotForm. So JotForm is one of my favorite form builders. It's one of my favorite interfaces. Um, it's not the easiest to set up, but it's also not the hardest. And it also is very powerful. It does connect into Zapier. It also connects directly into Airtable. And I did confirm they are not going to drop the integration between the two um, because that would break a lot of infrastructure we have. <laughs> but it's really important to make sure that while they're trying to build out this table, they're currently not going to make any adjustments to the direct integration um, with um, Airtable. So um, you'll see some submissions in here um, and it is a little bit more robust. It looks a little bit more like I would say a fancier table and interface is a little touchy, um, but you can see I'm also recording, so it's like in the way. Um, but you'll see the submission date, and that's prioritized. Um, I would say that I would not usually use a submission date as the first column for a data set, um, just in the way that I use data. So um, I would like to add a new field and maybe add a, um, add a formula. So let's go ahead and go into form, um, columns, add a new column. And let's go ahead and create an advanced formula. And I get no information on how to do that, so that's okay. Uh, let me try it the way I would normally do it. An error table. And see if this breaks. And so I am trying the. Um, Field merging. Oh, so now if I try to create something and it breaks, it then pops this up. So let's try that again. I want to add a new column formula. Next, next. Okay. And then so I can then do it this way. So I can look for first name, I think. I get to search for it. It looks like it's in no particular order. Oh, this will drive me batty. Um, okay. Let's see here. That's very interesting. Okay. First name. And is there a space in here? And again, I think this is a little bit of just trying to um, learn the, the way that things are built. 
And then let's see, last name. In no particular order. Here we go. Create column. And I guess we'd have to fiddle with that a little bit. Um, and this is a customization I would do in um, Airtable is to be able to concatenate. I can say that word. I can concatenate information. Um, edit formula and is there a space that would drive me insane. Um, okay, possibly. I would just like to pin this column, I think, is what I would like to do. Uh, and drag it. Yes, I can. I can drag it. Switch it up. Let's see. There we go. Here's name. You are a fiddly little creature, aren't you? Um, and it looks like I can unfreeze this pane. Unfreeze column. And then I can go back to columns here and then move this up, right? Move, thank you. Okay. Um, no, you move. I said to move. Okay, and then I want to pin this column, right? Okay, um, so I've accomplished the same thing I would do in Airtable. No? Do you see that? That is so crazy. Very funny. Okay, now it moves. It wants to fight me. Um, let me see. Um, so then you'll see that as I'm touching stuff, it does update the form, the fields. And then this is, I guess, the submission date. But see how it like dropped out the name of the column. Um, so again, these are new. Any new software, I wouldn't like say that it's out of the gate if there's something that's not perfect. I would just say that if you're trying to, I know a lot of people have such shiny app syndrome so i just want to make sure that if you're trying to you know dump airtable because you feel it's too expensive um just know that there's going to be a learning curve for any software and this is me literally trying to, to learn it in real time um and do it based on what i've learned in the past and what has worked for other software so um when it comes to learning software i believe in the brute force mentality where you just get in there and start trying to figure it out um and then google it <laughs> So this is what happens in no code a lot. Um, and then if I need to like do some low code, that's fine. But um, just trying to brute force things. So it does have that capability. And then if I wanted to add a new tab, let's see what happens when you add a new tab. Um, so I can create a table view, a calendar view, an uploads view. So this means that I would create a new tab. I guess I can connect this to this form. I guess I can do this. I don't know if I have any submissions in there. Um, probably a bad example. Maybe. Eats. And I'll delete the top. Okay. 
So I'm going to add a calendar view and I'm going to do it off of this. So it looks like the data is what I would call static, static, right? It's not, it's not giving me a view of this. It's giving me a new entry of view. So like, I want to see, like I changed I changed, um, bear with me one second. So I changed some email addresses and you'll see that I, um, the last update, like this one, I changed the email address. So this doesn't look like it's a dynamic field, although it did. Interesting. Um, cause like this is last update date is today, but I just changed this email address. now it's updating it's just like this it's only picking up certain things um so going back to my thought here is that i want this so, so sally so it looks like it is dynamic and then i wanted to uh, colorize my events by submission date I would like to see the submission dates. Let's see, like the submission dates are not really a date anymore. It's very interesting. So I guess if I put this over here. Okay, so this is updating both So this is updating a different field. So if we go back over here, is there a new field? And then can I pull in a different column? Add. So here's a different field types. Here's a date and time. I can also pull in columns from other forms, but I'm a little, like I, I like that if you could, I like the idea that you can bring in fields from other forms. So a lot of times, especially in the use case of, you know, placement, um, placement recruiters. Um, sometimes you have a form that is a screening form where people just put in their basic information and you just make sure that they're, um, they pass the first cut. And then you might have a second form that you're having them fill in after the fact, which would then, um, fill in that information into the same record. So the record would be, it would consist of some, some questions, and then you would backfill more questions into their the entire record, um, which is what I would do in your table. So this one is a little squirrely. So if I wanted to add a connection to another form, I could do so. And um, you drive a car. Um, not legal employment question at all. Um, um, so I'm unclear how that would fill in. So let's go ahead and fill in the job application and see what happens. I don't think it backfills like I would expect it to. You okay. 
So then, did you update? What did you update? I saw something update. Um, let's see if I can refresh this page because I have a couple entries. That have Hello Whip Girl with Jen. So. I don't see it been updated. So let me open a tab of connect to form. So it looks like you can build a new form pretty easily. And then Can you drive a car? It links, but it doesn't seem to fill in that information or create a new record. So I'd be interested to see how that kind of connects, right? So like here's Genrod. Oh, I see. So yeah, you can pull in the record. So like in that case, you can pull in the information from the other column, right? So I have two entries of Genred. But it doesn't tell me, right? Because I can add hello to anyone. So it's not really giving me answers like from a dynamic point of view. Like I'm not able to say, okay, I want to go in a Genred entry and job form in job application form and pull in the information, I just see that there's some information here, right? So like I can put in hello at example.com, button job, what's up? So then I go back over here. And now I can see those two options, but I don't know where they're coming from, right? So then it's not it's not really a dynamic link where you're able to backfill. You kind of have to manage it. Um, I did look at Zapier, and currently it's just a new submission. Um, and then I believe this is connected to my account. Let me see if I can do any actions in job. Yeah, so I'm not able to like update from one field to another in job form. Where it is in Airtable, like I can take a new entry in job form. And so like the first form, I would connect it directly into Airtable. The second form, I would have it go through Zap and then find the entry that has that same email address and then backfill that information. So that's where you're kind of, the, the, the concept is there. I just feel like this is, this is for somebody who really just needs a spreadsheet and would like to kind of group and filter and do some ba some basic data data manipulation. Um, you can do formulas. You can they're a little unclear, um, but that could just be my novice. Um, and then um, the other thing that I do like about the fil filters now is that you're actually able to filter um, because the old interface for dot form. If you have an entry, so sometimes if job form misfires and I need to backfill, I need to download some files and upload them into um, 
Airtable because for whatever reason, Jotform wasn't talking to Airtable that day. Um, I would have to download all of the entries from a form and then go into Excel, filter them out and all of that. So like now I could say, I want anybody who's in submission date and broke. Here we go. Oh no, I didn't. Um, so apply filter. So now I can actually filter. Uh, it's probably last updated date. Filter. Last updated date is today. Apply filter. Last update date. Apply filter. There are people with that updated date. Unless there is more than one updated date. That's super strange. And there's some submission dates too. Filter. Or submission dates. Ooh, you're so mean. Okay. Can I? Well, you were able to. Um, so let me see if I can just favorite people that I want to. Okay, so then I could feel like I could favorite them. It's probably a good way to um, shortlist a couple entries. So before you would have to download the entire CSV file, and for some people it could be like thousands of entries, and then you have to filter in Excel, and it's just an extra step, right? So then I can download all here, which is nice. Um, but the date is a little squirrely. Um, so in that case. I feel like this is a good, if you want a flat stack and you're not auctioning off the data once you get it. So the whole idea of Airtable is that it's a database, a very powerful database that has interlinking connections. So it's a true interlinking connection that you're linking this record, this entry in one table and dynamically linking it to another table Whereas this one is kind of like, you can pull entries from this one, but I don't know what that entry says. Um, so it could be much more um, robust than I'm seeing, but off the top of my head um, and just from what I'm playing with, it's not exactly where it needs to be from what, for me, ooh, Airtable killer. Um, instead, it's more of like a, I'm gathering data and I would like to do something with the data. So like if you're running a survey and you want to run it in um, job form, you can do that. And that's perfectly legitimate. Now, if you're trying to hook it up to your marketing tools um, to do something with the data, that's a different conversation, right? So like this is, this is cute. This is a nice little report. And so if you're just trying to get some information, this looks like it's, Like, so this is great if you're trying to um, create a marketing, like print out really quickly. I think this is great. Um, so if you're just trying to understand what people are saying in the forums and stuff like that, this is fun. And I think it's nice that you can generate this quickly um, and do all the things. So you can have, like, it looks like you can have caregiver table and then some questions that you're getting you know bar graphs out of and things like that which you would do in Airtable in like here's a score across all applicants and yes I would have to build this manually um, I would create a new chart and then I would I would say what information I wanted to do um, and then you know putting it into a page kind of a pain in the butt but this is nice because it just gives you everything. So if you're trying to do like a marketing analysis um, off of surveys, this is nice. 
doing something with that data and you know shoving it into a, a, a program that's going to run calculations for you not going like it's not there yet you would download the csv file and upload it and things like that like if you're doing data manipulation in r it's fine right because you're not doing the same data manipulation in, in airtable this is if you're trying to action and kind of run your business from a database this is not a database in that respect and i think that's where a lot of the tables the concept of the tables is not to replace a database and this is why jotform doesn't call it jotform database they call it airtable airtable does use the word table in it but i think it, it it's a fundamentally a database that has some cool upgrades and add-ins and things like that. Whereas Jotform is a form builder and it has so much better forms than Airtable. Like, oh my gosh, the conditional formatting, the calculated fields, all the things you can format, you can make them pretty. It's really cool. But I think that, you know, from a perspective of like, um, is this going to replace a software stack? Can I get rid of that branding? Oh, I have a free account. <laughs> I use the free account for my demos. Um, but I think that it's important to kind of, um, it's, it's important to see what the features are, but I would say that I would spend some time with jot form, the tables and see what am I trying to accomplish the same thing that you would do normally in another program and see if you can do it. That's usually how I evaluate software is I say, okay, if I wanted to replace this with this piece of my software stack, I needed to do this laundry list of things. If it's not going to do it, it's a cute add on to what they're already doing. If you are not doing powerful calculations, if you're not doing automations, if you're just trying to get the data in a table form, Jot form is amazing and you can do some stuff. You can add the formulas. You can do some data manipulation within the form. You just aren't backfilling information. You're not able to upgrade and enhance the information. You're not really able to, you're not going to send a Twilio text off of this, right? So if you're texting out of your database, if you're using the automations in Airtable where you're doing the automations, um, um, well, like Gmail and stuff like that, this is not going to do it. If you're just trying to get some information, be able to manipulate it, kind of filter for things and kind of see things in a flat stack. This is perfect. So again, Google tables, much more robust in automation, still lacking this, not an automation tool. It's a cool tool. It gives you some more, you know, information about, about your data. It creates a spreadsheet. It flattens your stack. If you're just building a spreadsheet, this is great. I don't think that this is going to be the end all be all of your automation. I think this is nice. If you need really, really powerful forms, if you're doing marketing surveys, this is great. Um, I would love to know whether other use cases you would use that you would not need an air table or another table to kind of connect the data. If you're just trying to replace that Google spreadsheet that you're using. Um, yeah, so I think that's the biggest thing. I think that, you know, you can change things. I would say you probably would be changing it here. If you change the type of, it looks like it's pretty dynamic. So like a lot of times the questions I ask in a form don't always necessarily match the destination in Airtable. Like if it's a single select or multi-select, um, sometimes I do have to create a connection between Zapier and Airtable because if I try to use the internal connect to Airtable and the questions don't quite match up, then I am in for a roll of hurt because it will not connect Airtable to Jotform. So like sometimes I want things to dump into a short text and then they, um, there are short text here, but I want them as a long text in Airtable then um, it sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you can see that, you know, it has to be a one to one and most software, no matter what you're doing, like you're using Airtable, whenever you're using a platform and you're trying to get data from one software to another, you sometimes have to clean it and make sure that it matches 
from the the interface into the destination point. So this one is a little, it's very similar that the questions that you're asking, the way that you're asking them in Jot form is how they present in the Jot form tables. If you wanted to do more manipulation of the data, then you would use a connector like um, Zapier or um, Integramat. I like Zapier just because it's a little bit less maintenance for me um, because clients can kind of use it on their own. It's a graphical user interface. It's pretty easy to use. Integramat is just a little bit more overwhelming, um, but it's really freaking powerful. So there's a lot of different, you know, trade-offs and stuff like that. But again, you want to make sure that um, if you need to manipulate the data, you probably do need a new destination than Jot form because it does look like, you know, and it, it's, it's obvious, it's not obvious, but it's, it's kind of makes sense because I can't click on like last name, for example, in Jot form and be like, oh, change this question type. In Airtable, which is a very, very flat form, I can say, oh, I don't want this question to be a short answer anymore. I want it to be a drop down. And I don't have to reconfigure everything. Whereas this one, I have to go in, I have to add a new form element. I have to change the element. I mean, I have to create a new element. I have to rename it. And then I have to reconnect that field either in the integration or in the, um, in the table, right? So like that, you have to kind of deprecate this last name, add the new field type, and then reconnect it all the way through, um, which is true for most interfaces, but it would make sense even in this one that if you change your question type, it kind of starts to break down the information. Whereas if I change a question type here, and then I, you know, I wanted to still land in Airtable correctly, then even though I'm changing the interface field, it doesn't change the endpoint field because the endpoint field's already in the database and I can brute force it into um, where it needs to go. I can shove the puzzle piece back in, even though the originating um, field is different. Whereas Jod form, you'd probably deprecate last name and then have a new last name um, and, you know, maybe check, adjust things and stuff like that. Um, but that's kind of the, the bigger question, overarching question is that you can't change the field type in the destination point in Jot form, it looks like, because the logic in Jot form is that if you need to change the type of question you're asking, you're adding a new question, you're deleting the other question. You'll see like sometimes um, emails we put in a short answer field and then later on have to change it to a, um, an email field just to make sure that people are actually filling it in correctly, things like that. So again, I don't, I don't think it's a bad tool. I think it's great for certain applications and I would love to know what applications you're like, everyone's just going like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever thing. Um, I would love to know just because it's helpful for me to see why a software would work as a flat stack and why you would actually try to improve the stack and kind of do more things. So anywho, I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you um, appreciate it. And if you did like this, um, go ahead and give us a like. Um, again, this was brought to you by Adept Interfaces. If you are looking to automate your business, customize software, and do all the things, um, hit them up. It's adeptinterfaces.com. And if you have questions for me or would like me to look at some software, go ahead and put a comment below. I'd love to know um, what software you would like me to look at. Again, I keep my eyes out for any tables that are emerging. Um, I think this is really exciting that there are people, there are software companies that are trying to address the, there's no one software for all. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of software tries to do a lot of good and wants to be the all in one. Um, but this isn't going to necessarily replace your um, CRM. Maybe it will. Maybe if you're just trying to, um, you know, keep track of, you know, your um, people who are booking appointments with you and things like that. Or if you're just trying to keep, you know, an idea of who your people are that you're following up for CRMs um, or just a list of all of your appointments, this works. Um, but if you're looking for more robust automation, probably not there yet. Um, but this is a, also a great tool. Um, designing your forms and your interfaces is the most important piece. Um, I can't that, and then obviously the database management, um, that database design, but knowing how you ask the questions is a hundred percent of it. Just because, you know, if you change a question, change how you ask it, you have to reconnect it. Um, so interfaces are very, you know, very 
robust and very helpful, but they're only as helpful as the design that you put to, into them. You can't just kind of like um, throw something up there and then keep changing it. It doesn't let you um, adjust while you're flying. So anyway, have a great day. And again, thank you so much for hanging out. I know this was long, but I hope that you get to see how things work and maybe not spend so much time yourself with the brute force and see what I look at. All right, I will talk to you soon.